In today's video, I'm sharing with you new updates to Premiere Pro in version 23.2, one of which solves that iPhone HDR color issue that a lot of you have been having. Also, a special thanks to our friends over at Dell Monitors for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna tell you more about my new ultra sharp IPS black technology monitor that I started using for video editing. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. The first update is automatic tone mapping. So here inside of Premiere Pro, I have a standard Rec. 709 color space sequence. And inside of it, I have a bunch of different types of media. I have some log footage. I have some standard Rec. 709 footage that doesn't look washed out. And then I have some iPhone footage that was shot in HDR. And you can see it just looks really overexposed, right? And a lot of you have asked me over email, like, how can I fix this? What's going on with the HDR footage? And in the meantime, I've just been saying, you know, turn off the HDR setting inside of your iPhone setting so that way you don't have this issue. But now it's fixed. Now in version 23.2, if you right click on the sequence and go to sequence settings, there's now this option to do auto tone map media. And this will automatically be turned on. But if you need to turn it off, this is where you do it. So press okay and bam, you can see that the highlights are no longer blown out. So after I turn back on Lumetri Color Auto and some color grading on top as an adjustment layer, here is the result. Awesome. So if you have previously turned off HDR video to avoid this issue, you can now turn it back on and start using it because the auto tone mapping fixes the issue, especially if you're one of those editors that has to use multiple different types of clips, whether it's log or standard Rec. 709 or HDR footage. And one reason to use HDR is that it just makes a more brilliant, brighter image compared to standard video. So you should be able to shoot with it and now you can without having to deal with that color space issue. So talking about color, I want to tell you about this new monitor that I started using. So this new monitor is part of the Ultra Sharp series, but it's curved and it connects to my Apple computer via USB-C. So it serves as the display port as well as the charger. And what's even better is once that USB-C is plugged in on the bottom of the monitor are additional ports so it can serve as a USB-C hub. And my favorite part is I can actually plug an ethernet cable directly into the monitor. So that way I never have to plug in an adapter into the laptop itself. So not only does this monitor have a ton of real estate, 34 inches for me to extend and my timeline while I'm editing, it also has the new IPS black technology. So you might be like, well, what is IPS black technology? Well, essentially to simplify it, it just increases the contrast and the color accuracy of the monitor, which is especially useful when I need to see more detail in the highlights and the shadows when I'm doing specific color grades or changing colors of existing colors inside of Premiere. So while I wear blue light blocking glasses, this monitor also comes built in with the comfort view plus which reduces blue light emissions which is good for your eye health especially if you're a video editor because you look at a screen a lot so if you'd like to learn more about this monitor specifically i put a direct link just down below the next update is new language support for speech to text so if you didn't know there's a text panel inside of premiere pro so if you have your video here you can actually click on create transcription and it will use ai to auto transcribe your entire sequence. Of course, English comes built in, but now as you scroll down, there are three more languages, Norwegian, Swedish, and Dutch. If you need any of those languages, they're here now. For Swedish, one of my editors, Rickard, is Swedish, and I'm hoping that he's gonna record a short clip of him speaking so we can test out to see how the Swedish performs. I'm gonna do like a tongue twister first. That could be fun. Sju sjösjuka sjömän. Sjönk på skeppet Shanghai. Finns det hjärterum? Finns det sjätterum? Now, if you're wondering how to download any of these languages, there's two ways to do it. The first way is when you're ready to transcribe, you can click on this little icon here to download. As you transcribe, it'll download that language pack so you can use it offline so you don't have to be connected to the internet. The second way, which is the way I prefer to do it, is by going to the Adobe Desktop app and next to Premiere Pro version 23.2, you can click on the ellipsis 
and click on add-ons. And here you can click to add any of these languages. So if I wanna download German, for example, I can click on add and it will start to download. And I prefer this because you don't actually need to transcribe actively to download this pack. So I would just download all of them here rather than in Premiere Pro. So that way you know you don't need to be connected to the internet to use any of these languages. Another update that's currently in beta is mm -hmm. called text-based editing. I made a video about this already. You can click up here to watch, but essentially after you auto generate your transcript, you can actually select portions of the text. And when you delete the text, it translates directly to your timeline. So it'll remove that section of the video based on the text. So definitely go check that out. You can download the beta version of Premiere at the same time as the current release. And there's no conflict between the two different apps that are currently installed side by side. The next update is the new reset options at launch. So if you're on a Mac, and you click open, hold the option key at the same time, and this will bring up a reset options window. If you're on a PC, you'll hold control. So here inside of the reset options, you have reset app preferences, clear media cache, reset plugin loading cache, and disable third-party plugins. Now, why is this useful? Well, Premiere Pro and the Adobe team actually recommends when you update to a new dot version of Premiere, so 23.1, 23.2, 23.3, to actually clear your media cache and reset your plugin loading first because then it helps the new update perform better. So what we can do is click on clear media cache and reset plugin loading cache and continue. And this is going to clean the cache and the plugin preferences so the new update is fresh and ready to go. So if you're watching this and you haven't cleared your cache in a while, that means that all of these cache files are building up on your system and it's taking up a ton of space and it's slowing Premiere Pro down. So if you haven't done it in a while, I recommend going to your preferences and clearing your cache now and you're gonna see a drastic change in performance in Premiere Pro. I've also put a link to an Adobe support page which includes other reasons you should use any of these reset options and best practices before you update to a new version of Premiere Pro. So those are the major updates to this new dot version. There's also another update to team projects. So if you use team projects, which is available to all users now, by the way, you can check out the article that I've dropped in my description box that goes into detail about what that update is. If these updates are useful for you, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you have any other feature requests, of course, use the beta app and go up to the right corner and you can request a feature or you can even request a bug. You can click over here to watch the other video I made on the new text-based editing and you can click over here to subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much for watching everyone and as always keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye! Whoop.